The resting membrane potential is discussed in this screencast. This topic may be found in Chapter 7 of your textbook. The screencast was designed to help you achieve the following objectives. For the resting membrane potential, describe the electrical gradient including the voltage across the plasma membrane. Describe the two important chemical gradients across the plasma membrane and describe the sodium potassium ATP pump and how it maintains the resting membrane potential. As you know, the nervous system is the fast controlling and coordinating system of the body. Its functions are based on the ability of its neurons to send electrical signals in response to a stimulus. In order for a neuron to respond to a stimulus, a set of conditions across the plasma membrane must exist. These conditions give the plasma membrane potential energy and are referred to as the resting membrane potential. Let's now describe the resting membrane potential in detail. This blue structure in the middle of your screen represents the plasma membrane. The extracellular fluid, that is the fluid that's outside of the cell, is here on this side of the plasma membrane. And on this side we have the intracellular fluid or cytosol. There are potassium ions located both inside the cell and outside the cell. However, the the concentration of potassium ions is much greater inside of the cell compared to the concentration of potassium ions outside of the cell. If we look at the concentration of sodium ions, we find that the opposite is true. There's a greater concentration of sodium ions in the extracellular fluid compared to the intracellular fluid and the sodium ions in the extracellular fluid outnumber the potassium ions in the intracellular fluid. So when we add up all of the positively charged potassium and sodium ions in the extracellular fluid, there is a greater concentration compared to the pos potassium and sodium ions in the intracellular fluid. In addition, there are negatively charged molecules in the intracellular fluid, such as proteins and amino acids. This makes the extracellular fluid more positive compared to the intracellular fluid. In fact, if you were to measure voltage across the plasma membrane using a voltmeter, it would measure about negative 70 millivolts. A volt is a measure of the tendency of charged particles to flow. Negative voltage indicates that the intracellular fluid is more negative compared to the extracellular fluid. So when a membrane is at its resting membrane potential, there is an electrical gradient of negative 70 millivolts that potentially can pull positively charged ions from the extracellular fluid across the plasma membrane into the intracellular fluid. When the plasma membrane is at its resting membrane potential, it is polarized. That is, there is an unequal distribution of charges across the plasma membrane. The potential energy that results from the separation of charges across the plasma membrane is very similar to the potential energy that is found in a charged battery. The energy in a battery, as you know, can be used to move the components of a motor as well as to illuminate a light bulb. The energy of the resting membrane potential, like the energy in a charged battery, is dependent on the separation of charges. At the resting membrane potential, two chemical gradients exist as well. 
Because the potassium ion concentration is greater in the intracellular fluid, a force potentially will move potassium ions from the intracellular fluid to the extracellular fluid. And conversely, because the sodium ion concentration is greater in the extracellular fluid than the intracellular fluid, potentially a force will move sodium ions from the extracellular fluid into the intracellular fluid. Both the potassium ions and sodium ions moving down their concentration gradients. In conclusion, the resting membrane potential is an electrochemical gradient. An electrical gradient exists that creates a force that has the potential of moving positively charged particles from the extracellular fluid to the intracellular fluid. Chemical gradients also exist for potassium and sodium that create forces that have the potential of moving potassium and sodium down their chemical concentration gradients across the plasma membrane. Question, if the plasma membrane is not permeable to charged particles, do sodium and potassium ions ever cross the plasma membrane? The answer is yes. There are specific leaky channels located in the plasma membrane that allow a certain number of sodium and potassium ions to leak through, moving down their concentration gradients. The obvious follow-up question is, well, if sodium and potassium ions constantly leak through the plasma membrane, how is the resting membrane potential maintained? I mean, if leakage occurs indefinitely, eventually there will be no sodium and potassium gradients. The answer is the sodium-potassium pumps. These pumps maintain the resting membrane potential by returning leaked potassium to the intracellular fluid and leaked sodium to the extracellular fluid, maintaining the resting membrane potential. These sodium-potassium pumps use ATP, and for every molecule of ATP used, three sodium ions are returned to the extracellular fluid, and two potassium ions are returned to the intracellular fluid. The sodium-potassium pumps are constantly at work, so ATP is constantly being consumed by these pumps. In fact, the sodium-potassium pumps account for about 70% of the total energy used by the nervous system. Let's now review the objectives of this screencast. For the resting membrane potential, describe the electrical gradient, including the voltage, across the plasma membrane. Describe the two important chemical gradients across the plasma membrane. Describe the sodium-potassium ATP pump and how it maintains the resting membrane potential. The next screencast will discuss Nerve impulses.